I'm here with my guy, young Aussie phenom, Rocco Zakarski. Rocco, how are you, bro? I'm good, bro. Excited to be here. What we're going to do today is we're going to head to that back wall and we're basically just going to talk hoops and talk shoes. For Ready sure. to go? Yeah. I know, man, I've been seeing your name popping up everywhere now. It's your draft mm -hmm. year this year. Yeah. Man, what's it, what's it like having your name up there in those headlines? I mean, it's pretty surreal. Like, I never never did I expect to sort of be up there. It's cool and, you know, it's a long way to go, but it's, it's promising. Yep. Well, in saying that, I know it's a long way to go and there's like a whole journey this year, right? Like, it's your draft year. Mm -hmm. But, man, what a, what a way to, like, start it. 18 year old named in the Boomers 22 man squad, right? Mm -hmm. Man, what was, what was that like when you got that announcement? Um, there were quite a few emotions running through my head. Like, yeah. I was excited, I was really nervous. You know, like, a group chat with the boys opened up and everyone's like throwing in their names and stuff. And it's, it's sort of like a crazy moment to me to sort of be around those guys and just sort of being like listed next to Joe Ingles and Josh Gideon, Paddy Mills, like yep. it's crazy, but it was awesome. So you flew over to LA, you stayed with all the boys. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about that experience. I, I never seen him and the first time meeting was showing up at Joe's house for a barbecue. Um, so it was awkward, you know, meeting my idols in such like a casual conversation. Yep. Um, but being around that camp, like, Everyone has that mindset of wanting to get better and it was like, it was GBO, Gold Vibes Only. And that was that, it was a three day camp, but every day you're just waking up ready to attack it and everyone's got that same mindset. Like yep. it's, it's go time, it happens once every four years. So that was awesome. Yep, you're an 18 year old, you show up there, right? Like you said, it's a little bit intimidating. You're there with your idols. Were they, were, were the boys welcoming to you as soon as you got there? Did anyone take you under yeah. their wing? Yeah, for sure. It's almost like a collective. Yep. Like everyone there was so welcoming. Jock especially, like Jock's sort of been a, a sounding board all year and to have him reach out, invite me to LA, that was awesome. Um, but yeah, it's like sort of that boomer's culture, like once a boomer, always a boomer. And no matter what sort of level that is, whether you go to an Asia qualifier or you're a starter on an Olympian team, yep. it's, um, yeah, you're always part of that culture and part of that family. Yep. After the LA camp, you ended up in Miami with Patty. Tell me about that. What, how did that happen and what kind of went on? Yeah, so we finished up camp in LA and um, Patty and DJ Sackman came up and they said, look, what are you doing over the next two weeks? And they wanted a big man to train out, like to train with. And I went to mum and I said, mum, I, th I think we might be going to Miami. So that was, um, that was pretty crazy, you know, to do two weeks in him, uh, with him and, you know, with, a, with an NBA coach and NBA players. Like, that was surreal and probably an experience that I'll never forget. What's an on-court session with Paddy like? Because I know, I see, I see the DJ sack man, Paddy, mm -hmm. he does his little vlogs and it looks like he's yeah. intense, man. Like, he's getting shots up all the time. Yeah. What's a session look like? It's all so structured and, you know, he has his shots and DJ's working down with me on the other end getting my shots up. It's all sort of based around what you need. Yep. Um, and that was awesome. And then, you know, we're running five on five with, you know, guys playing in Brazil, guys playing in college in America. They all, they're in Miami, they want to work out. Yep. You know why we're here? We're here to talk shoes. Mm -hmm. Talk to me. Is there anything that catches your eye on this wall? We'll chat about it. Yeah, I mean, I wore the LeBron 21s this, you know, this year. I started wearing them in training. They're a really comfortable shoe. Yep. I actually have that colorway too, so I've yep. been wearing LeBrons since the 16s. Yep. So it's sort of like a favorite player, favorite shoe. Yep. I know you've got a you've got a crazy shoe collection. Like I know on your story you're always posting that you've got these exclusive gets. What's the mm -hmm. what's the best the best pair of kicks that you have in your rotation right now? I think right now I have a Kobe 5, PJ Tucker P. Yep. Little blue pair. They're probably they're probably the most exclusive pair right now. Probably one of my favorites. Yep. I got them at the start of last season as like a welcome to NBL, and that was pretty cool. So yep. definitely those. Yep. 
Cool, man. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a pair of these. Can I get a pair of these? Yeah, of course, bro. What size are you? Uh, 17. Yeah, sure, bro. I'll go grab it for you. Sweet. Earlier this year, you are over in Germany. You had the Albert Schweitzer. You guys came away with gold. Mm -hmm. You were named MVP of that tournament. What was it like going away to an international tournament and being named the best player? It, it was pretty awesome. Uh, it was my first time playing my age group since I signed with Bullets. You know, having these guys that you sort of grow up playing basketball with and then yep. all of a sudden you're on the same team together yep. all with the goal of winning a gold medal. Yep. Um, makes, it, makes it fun yep. and you know, been around each other for years so it's easy. It's easy to interact and yep. whatnot. Like I said, a bunch of high profile guys. Probably the most high profile was playing with Roman. You yeah. played with Roman before, you played on the Queensland squads mm -hmm. together. What was what was it like playing with him? Yeah, it's it makes my life a whole lot easier. Um, because Roman puts his head down and goes for the drive and he looks up and there's five people around him and everyone else is wide open. So playing with Roman makes it really easy. Yeah. I like playing with him. Um, but yeah, you know, to see me and him from playing against each other in under 16s to being on a world stage together and both being dominant at that tournament, that was definitely like, you know, it's a pretty cool moment to have. You've played all over the world at this point, right? Mm -hmm. when, when was it that you started to really realize that, hey, like this basketball thing might work for me? I, I sort of had that feeling, a small feeling about it when in under 16s I got the Global Academy offer. Yep. That was that was a big moment for me. But I mean, I had guys like Shane Froling and um, CJ Bruton. Yep. Like those, I met in Townsville as a lanky 13-year-old, and all of a sudden, they're putting in a good word for me. Yep. Um, but yeah, I've been around, and that was the big one. But the biggest one so far was definitely Under 17 World Cup. Yep. Um, looking up and seeing my family surrounded by college coaches and stuff. I think yep. that was pretty surreal. And I think that's when I realized that there's serious traction in this sport for me and I could start attacking it. So yeah. Yep. Were you to chat shoes, talk to me. Is there anything else that's catching your eye? Definitely the 17s. I got two pairs of these at home. Haven't seen this colorway yet. I've been wearing them a lot this preseason. Yep. Um, the traction on them is actually really good. Yep. Um, they're a comfortable shoe, and again, I've worn the KD since the 14s. Yep. So, a little newer to these guys, but I really like them. I know we we're talking about the 21s, and you mentioned that LeBron's LeBron's your favorite player, right? Who do you yeah. who do you look up to in the NBA? Like, who do you mold your game on? Who do you look up to? Yeah, so my, my favorite's LeBron, um, but obviously, molding my game, I, I look at guys like Joel Embiid, Bam Adebayo. Yep. Even Kristaps Porzingis, like some of those guys that are stretching the floor. Yep. Um, those guys are like, those, I enjoy watching them. And yep. Am I able to get these in a 17? Yeah, bro, I'll check if we're good at playing, man. Thank you. So, man, you're, you're one of only a handful of locals to ever be a part of the NBL Next Star program, which, yep. which is huge. But let's go back to the start. When did you first start playing basketball? Um, I was probably 12, maybe 13. and. My first year I played Division One basketball and game one I did did the jump ball and then first stoppage of play I got subbed out yep. and didn't touch the floor for the rest of the game. That happened two or three times. They put you in for the jump ball and you didn't play the rest of the game? Yeah, and then I got subbed out. So that was awesome. Um, I that was when I was top age 14s or bottom age 16s and then I dropped down to Div 4. I said if I'm going to play basketball, I'm going to play. Yep. Fouled out at every game by end of third quarter so that was great too um, and then yeah found a coach that I loved and sort of under 16s is where it took off yeah how did you get into it is is your family a big basketball family or you just kind of gravitated to the sport no it's so my family comes from a prestigious swimming background yep. um, so like dad was an Olympian and mum was a world champion really? swimmers, swimmers. yeah yeah so I, I was never like swimming was always my sport yep. I was never looking at basketball and then one day at school, they're like, oh, you're tall, you know, you should try basketball. Yep. And I thought that's like, yeah, just yep. another silly comment. Yep. But I got into it and I ended up falling in love with it. And now, you know, here we are. Man, so. that, that's news to me. So you're a swimmer, huh? Talk to me, talk to me about that, man. Like, 
I grew up as my mum likes to call it. I was a water baby, yep. so I was always around the water, and I fell in love with that. Yep. Um, and I was lucky enough to go to nationals twice and yep. perform pretty well. So, and then I I retired as a 14 year old to pursue basketball. Yep. You yep. started playing basketball at 14 and you're saying you really started to get good at, at 16. Mm -hmm. When you went to that Div 4 team, what, what kind of clicked for you? Like, yeah, just being out there and experiencing playing. Yep. Uh, Cause I never had it before. Yep. And you know, I was, I was working with a coach, Lance Hurdle. And then the next year I got into a Div 1 team and I was playing with a coach called Rachel Mirabella. And that was like, that's when I really was like, I love this. I love this stuff. I need to get into it and yep. see how far I can go. Yep. So I ended up moving to Brisbane and I picked Northside as my little spot. That was when it really started. We got a call from Marty Clark and mum nearly hung up because she thought it was a scam call. <laughs> Turns out it was the head of NBA Academy. So yep. we were like, that was cool. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's where it all started. That's where it all started. The first time we ever covered you, I think, was it was at Northside. I don't know if it was that season yeah. or a season later, yeah. but there was this iconic. <laughs> oh, dude, don't get me started. <laughs> there was this iconic clip where I don't remember. Did you? Was it a dunk or you hit a three? I think you hit no. a corner three, and then you're coming down. You're you're coming down the court looking at the camera. Yeah, just, just I smart, was like smiling. skipping down the court. I I had a few what, of those moments. What happened there, bro? Like, talk to me about that play. Dude, I, when I was young, it was like what everyone ever wanted was to get a like instant mixtape. Yep. And I was like, you know what? I, I saw like you guys at the game and I saw someone on the baseline with the camera. Yep. And I'm like, this is my moment. Like, this is my moment. Um, shouldn't have been my moment um, <laughs> because I ruined it. But yeah, that was um, the beginning of it, I guess. It was. <laughs> A little awkward, but hey. Like, how tall are you now? You're seven, seven three. Seven three. Seven yeah. three. So you're a tall it. guy, right? What was it like growing up being being that tall? It's funny you say that. Gro growing up, I was always around my siblings, yep. so they were all tall, and I never really realised I was tall until I started going like you know, grade three in school, and I'm like, yep. wow, I'm the same height as my teacher. Yep. Then it was like, God, this is um, I'm pretty tall. Um, came with the good and the bad yep. like no one um, no one really liked you when you were tall for some reason as yep. a little kid um, but yeah I, again I wouldn't change it for the world I've yep. been given so many great opportunities what was your family like in kind of helping you through that yeah so they they really helped navigate that landscape I was always treated older than what I was yep. like you know, someone get that 13 year old off the table, get him to stop dancing um, you know, as a seven year old rocker. You know, they really helped out that sort of stuff because my dad lived it, you know, he was always tall and you know, my mum dealt with it. Um, she was, you know, tall for a woman. So yep. that was having them really help, yep. you know, me growing up for sure. Yeah, cool man. All right, we're here, we're talking shoes. Mm -hmm. Last one, what's catching your eye? Definitely these. The GT Hustle threes. I wore the twos a lot. Yep. Um, they're probably my most worn training shoe. I yep. have a lot of shoes in rotation, but yep. um, I love the comfort of them. Yep. And these ones are hopefully a bit of an upgrade. I haven't gotten a chance to wear them yet, yep. but soon, hopefully. Yep. All right, well, we're walking on with another pair of shoes today. So let's get a pair of those and we'll go uh, try them on and see what's going on. Sweet. Am I able to get these in a 17? Yeah, of course, bro, I got you. Appreciate it. Man, sourcing size 17s in these shoes can be can be pretty difficult. Uh -huh. So talk to me, the GT Hustle 3s, is that the shoe that you, you want to walk away with today? Yeah, 100%. I feel like I uh, try them out. I love the ones, love the twos, so hopefully threes are a bit better. All right, man. I mean, you're not walking away with them today, but we're going to get a pair shipped to you, guys. Keep a lookout for Rocco, mate, doing massive things. Number eight prospect in the world. Let's see where it goes this year and good luck, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.